Hi, assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 5, the states of matter. And in this chapter, there are going to be four subtopics altogether. So we have the subtopic of 5.1 gas, 5.2 liquid, 5.3 solid, and 5.4 phase diagram. So in this video, we're going to focus on the subtopic of 5.1 gas, part 1 of the video first. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to explain the qualitative analysis of the basic assumption of the kinetic molecular theory for an ideal gas. Next, we're going to define the gases law, which includes the Boyce law, Charles law, and Avogadro's law. Next, we're going to learn on how to sketch and interpret the graph that involve the Boyce law and Charles law. And this is going to be covered in part one of the video. Meanwhile, for the learning outcome of D and E, we're going to look about that in part two. So without any further ado, let us start with part one of the video first. So kinetic molecular theory of gases. So kinetic molecular theory of gases is used in order to explain the observed behavior of an ideal gases, where the ideal gases were going to obey the gas law, which includes the Boyce law, the Charles law, and Avogadro's law. In order to understand on how the ideal system works, we need to figure out few key assumptions. So the assumption number one that includes are the gases, we need to assume that they are made up of a large number of a small particle known as the molecule. And this molecule here need to be separated as far apart from one another in which we're going to assume that the volume of the gas is going to be very very small in comparison to the volume of the container. So, seolah-olah, so the volume of the gas, we just going to ignore it, where it is negligible, ataupun sangat tidak significant. Dan kita boleh abaikan the volume of the gases. And, as what you know that, the molecule, which is the gases, going to be in the state of a constant rapid motion. They are considered sebegerak. And as a result, they going to be colliding with one molecule to another, as well as with the wall of the container. And this collision here, gonna be assumed to be perfectly elastic without any loss of energy. And what gonna happen here is that there's just gonna be a redistribution of energy or the transformation of energy. So it just basically means that the energy is being conserved and we're gonna assume that there's no energy loss. Okay, and the other assumptions that we're going to include as well is there will be no attractive or repulsive forces between the molecule. Kita akan anggap tiada daya tarikan antara satu sama lain. Padahal, in reality, there is a attractive forces. So, as what you have learned in chapter 4, there are going to be a vendable forces, for example, London-London dispersion forces or the dipole-dipole double double forces. Tetapi, in an ideal gas situation, we just going to ignore all of that. And, as what you know that, when there is a collision from the molecule to the wall of the container, a pressure going to be exerted. And this situation are also influenced by the temperature. So, when the temperature increases, we're going to see that the molecule will move much more rapidly because the average kinetic energy increases. Okay? So, in the collision state, the gas molecule will exert a force to the wall of the container. Okay? And the pressure is going to be formed when the force is applied to the end here or to the container of the wall, to the wall of the container. And when the force is divided by the area, we're going to produce a pressure in which the force is in the unit of Newton and area is in the unit of meter square. And that is why the unit of the common unit of pressure that we usually use is in Newton per meter or known as Pascal. And here is the example of device that can be used in order to detect the gas pressure, which is known as parameter. Meanwhile, the below part here will be very helpful for you to convert the units of pressure to one another. 
So let's say the 1 ATM here can also be referred to 101,325 Pascal or Newton per meter, or it can be also be written as 760 millimeter hydrogen atom or millimeter mercury and 760 tall. So these are the conversion and it will be very, very helpful for you in order to solve problem related to the ideal gas equation. Now we're going to look into one of the gases law, which is the Boyce law. So according to Boyce law, for a fixed amount of gas, which is number of mole at a constant temperature. So when the number of mole and the temperature is constant, the Boyce law stated that the volume is inversely proportional to its temperature, which means that when the volume decreases, the pressure is going to get higher. So as what you can see here, at first the volumes are large. But when we reduce the volume to a certain amount, which is from 1 liter to 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 liter, the pressure will get higher and higher. And this is because the space for the molecule to move around will get limited. And as a result, they will collide with the walls of the container much more frequently, and then the pressure will get higher. Okay, and this situation can also be written in terms of volume, which is directly proportional to 1 over P, and PV can be located on one side. And then you can make an equation by putting K as the proportionality constant. And you can convert the K here into P1, P1 equal to P2, V2. So K here refer, referring to the same thing, but at two different situations, where P1 refer to the condition at the initial stage. Meanwhile, 2 here refers to the situation at the final stage. And P here refers to a pressure and V referring to the volume. And you can also reuse graph in order to relate the Boyce law. So as mentioned, when the pressure decreases, when the volume decreases, the pressure will get higher. So from here, you can see that when the volume got reduced, the pressure will get higher. Similarly, if you increase your volume, the pressure will get lower. So your, when your volume increases to here, then your pressure will get lower. At the same time, uh, this can be related by using a pressure where it is directly proportional to 1 over V. So supposedly, we're going to get a straight line graph in which the gradient is equal to K. And as mentioned, you can also bring the V to the left-hand side and then we can make it a subject, which is K here, which refers to a proportionality constant. And when we do that, we're going to get a graph of PV versus P and then we're going to get a straight line referring to a gradient, which has a zero gradient here. And then you're going to have a constant numbers throughout a graph of PV versus pressure. Now we're going to look into example on how we can apply the Boyce law. So a sample of the chlorine gas occupies a volume of 946 ml at a pressure of 7 to 6 mm mercury. So this volume here is going to be V1 and this pressure here is going to be P1. And this pressure here is written in terms of millimeter mercury. And then we need to calculate the pressure of the gas, which is our P2, in millimeter mercury as well as in atmospheric pressure, if the volume is reduced to 154 ml at a constant temperature. So here we're going to be our V2, and this happens at a constant temperature, which is a condition for the Boyce law. So we're going to use P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. And this is information that we have gotten from reading the question here. So we just substitute that in in which we're going to find the P2. So our P1 is 7 to 6 millimeter mercury, and our V1 here is 946 ml, and then our V2 is 154 ml. So ml and ml can be cancelled out, and as a result, when we do the maths here, we're going to get 4,460 millimeter mercury. So we have found out the pressure in millimeter mercury. And now we're going to change the millimeter mercury into atmospheric pressure. And this is where the conversion are important because from your conversion, you know that 760 millimeter mercury 
equal to one ATM. If you have 4,460 millimeter mercury, how many atmospheric pressure do you have? So for this, you have to do a cross multiplication similar to what you have learned before. Okay, so you can do a cross multiplication here. Here to here, here to there. And then you're gonna get 760x is equal to 4460. So you need to find x, so you need to divide 4460 with 760. And then you're gonna get 5.86 atm. So you have find out the pressure in millimeter mercury as well as in atmospheric pressure. So that's all for the Boyce law. Now we're gonna move on to the second gas law, which is the Charles law. So according to Charles law, for a fixed amount of gas, so the number of moles need to be constant with the pressure. So under this condition, we can say that the volume is directly proportional to the temperature in which the temperature needs to be in Kelvin. So as what you can see here, when the temperature goes higher, where the flame is going to get higher, so when the temperature increases, the volume of the molecule of the gas particle here will increase as well. So it will result the increase in the volume of the container because the molecule will move much more rapidly and occupies a bigger space. So you can make a relationship here where V is equal to T. And as before, you're going to bring all the term on one side. So T, we're going to bring it to here. So it's going to be divide. And then we can make a proportionality equation, which is equal to K. And then uh, K here is also referred to V over T, right? So you can make it V over T as well. And then you can make it like a change in the initial stage as well as the final stage. So we're going to put it V1, T1 is equal to V2, T2. Okay, so 1 here refers to the initial stage. And for the number 2 here refers to the final stage. And V referring to the volume. And the T here refers to the temperature in Kelvin. And this is super, super important because this formula here can only be applied and correct when you use the unit Kelvin. And if you have the question of using 25 degrees Celsius in the question, you need to convert that into Kelvin by adding with 273.15. So the situation in which the condition happened is at 298.15 Kelvin. So this is important step. Similarly, you can also use graph in order to relate the Charles law. As mentioned, when the volume, when the temperature increases, the volume will increase as well. So as a result, you're going to get a straight line graph and it will reach zero for a Kelvin here. So it's going to reach the zero axis, which is at the origin. However, when you use degree Celsius, so you need to extrapolate the graph so that it reaches negative 273.15 because 0 Kelvin here referring to referring to the negative 273.15 degrees Celsius and as a result that is why you need to extrapolate the graph for a degree Celsius unit. Okay, so just be really careful of the unit that you are using for the graph. Now, let us look into example on how we can apply the Charles law. So, a sample of the carbon monoxide gas occupies 3.2 liter at 125 degrees Celsius. So, this is going to be our volume 1 and this is going to be our temperature 1. And for this temperature, as mentioned, we need to change it into Kelvin. So, as a result, we're going to add it with 273.15. And then we need to calculate the temperature at which the gas will occupy, which is our T2, for 1.5 liter. So, this is our V2 if the pressure remains constant. So, for this, we're going to use the Charles Law equation, which is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And this is the information that we have gotten from the equation. And for the T1, we have to convert it into Kelvin. So we're going to plug in the value into this formula here. And then we need to find our T2. Okay, so for our T2, it's equal to V2 times T1 divided by V1 here. So our V2 is 1.4 liter times 
398.15 in Kelvin, and then V1 is 3.2 liter. So liter and liter can be cancelled out, and as a result, we're going to get the temperature to be 191.6 Kelvin. So this is how we do the question regarding Charles' law. Now we're going to look into the Avogadro's law. So according to Avogadro's law, at constant pressure and temperature, so this one is kept constant, the volume is directly proportional to the number of mole of the gas molecule present. So as what you can see here, when the number of mole increases, the volume that is occupied by the gas molecule inside the container will get higher. And this relation can be written as V is directly proportional to N, and we can make all the terms on one side, which is V over N, and then we can equate it with K. And then we can make a situation in which V1 and 1 is equal to V2 and 2, where 1 here refers to the initial stage, while the 2 here refers to the final stage. Okay, And N here refers to the number of mole of the gases, and V here refers to the volume. And this is an example of question on how we can apply the Avogadro's law. So as what you can see here, the two mole of the chlorine gas were kept in a cylinder with a piston occupy a volume of 49 liter. So this one going to be our V1, and here going to be our N1. So when another 3 mole of chlorine gas is pumped into the cylinder at constant temperature, so this is the, so this is the condition in which it happens at a constant temperature. And then, we need to calculate the final volume of the gas. So we need to find our V2 here. So for our N2, you need to be careful because our N2 here refer to the addition of another 3 mole. It is not equal to 3, but it is equal to, from original 2, we need to add up with 3. So we should suppose to get 5 mole. So our N2 is going to be 5 because it add 3 mole from 2 to 2. From the two moles. So we need to use the formula of V1 is equal to V1 over N1 is equal to V2 N2. And V1 here is equal to 49 liter. And then our N1 here is two mole. And then we're gonna find our V2 in which our N2 here is five mole as stated here. So we're just gonna do a cross multiplication and then the lastly. The volume of the gas that we're going to obtain at the final stage is 122.5 liter. Okay? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!